Welcome to episode 46 of our series on the origins and meanings of Appalachian and Southern surnames. Each of the surnames that we'll cover today was requested by members of our YouTube community. To make our task more manageable, we're focusing on pre-Civil War family names. After the Civil War, America entered the Industrial Revolution and thousands of different families from across the South and Appalachia moved to the Rust Belt, while foreign immigrants settled across the country, including big cities in the South and Central Appalachia and coal mining areas. On today's show, we'll investigate the origins and meanings of eight Appalachian and Southern surnames. To disentangle their origins, we'll look back to medieval Ireland, Wales, England, Scotland, Scandinavia, France, and Germany. I hope you'll join me. Hey, let's get started. Number one, Baxter. I must admit that when I received the request for Baxter, my mind went straight to a nine-hole golf course in Baxter Springs, Kansas. Now, 22 years ago, it was one of my favorite golf courses to play. I know some of you might think, what does Baxter Springs Golf Course in Baxter Springs, Kansas have to do with Appalachian or Southern surnames? After all, now you're talking about the Midwest. Well, if you're thinking that, I applaud you for knowing that Kansas is in the Midwest. But if you went to Baxter Springs, you might think that you're in Southern Appalachia or the Ozarks. The accent, dialect, landscape would probably sound and look familiar. This small section of Kansas is in the Little Ozarks. Don't forget that Bleeding Kansas was a prelude to the Civil War and it involved transplanted Southerners as well as free soil proponents. Many of the Southerners settled in the Little Ozarks. At any rate, Baxter is an Anglo-Scottish surname for one who was a baker. It started off its existence as Baxter. Now, <laughs> this comment's likely to trigger more than a few people. Baxter is quite common in Ulster and Northern Ireland. McGlysick says that it's derived from the Gaelic. <laughs> it's a branch or set of the clan Macmillan. It's often, but certainly not always, triggered. Now, the trigger warning here, warning, not warming, Scotch-Irish or Ulster Scott surname in Appalachia and the South. Number two, Comer. Henry Harrison tells us that Comer originated in England as another expression of Comber. It also applied to a person who combed wool. Since sheep raising has been a major part of the cultural history of the Isles, it was an important job to practice. McClassic points out that in Ireland, it has another origin that makes Comber an Irish surname. Its Gaelic version is, he says the root word is, which means dark or black. At the end of the day, I think we're safe in calling Comber or Comer an English or Irish surname depending on where your line and DNA take you. Number three, Bass. If you've watched more than a few of the surname episodes, you will have deduced by now that I'm a fan of deeply penetrating social commentary depicted in movies and TV shows. Yes, indeed. Reading Bass is no exception. I'm right now recalling Mayberry's own Ernest T. Bass. You might remember him as the bloke or good old boy who suffered from a psychological condition that prompted him to throw rocks at windows. On second thought, thought though, um, <laughs> maybe it was a scriptwriter who had that issue. Seriously, I have relatives named Bass. It's one of the most common or popular surnames in my hometown of Oliver Springs, Tennessee. Bass has a presence in Scotland, originating around 1206 near Aberdeen. However, it's linguistically a Teutonic surname that was a personal name, a given name. It first appears on the English records in the seventh century. Regarding its meaning, please don't shoot the messenger here, it meant low, fat, or uh, short. It's not found among the common surnames in Ireland or Wales. I'm confident that we should consider Bass an English or Scottish name of Teutonic origin. Number four, Maggard. This is a great example of a surname that was once found in Great Britain, but is now virtually non-existent anywhere in the Isles. For a moment, I thought I might have uh, I might have associated it with uh, Haggard as its origin, but I found that it originated as an adaptation of an old French personal name, Maggard, and a German name, Maggard. <laughs> it meant power, hard, strong. It was once somewhat common in medieval Suffolk, England. That suggests that it may have been in England before the Norman Conquest, but I'm not 100% sure of that contention. Given the historic nature of major population movements from Europe to America, the surname most likely came to Appalachia and the South from England. 
Regardless, it originated as a Teutonic name. Now, in case you're wondering what Teutonic means, don't feel alone. It refers to the Teuton people. They were an early Germanic folk in Northern Europe. Now, today it means relating to German people. That doesn't necessarily correlate to the geographic parameters of the state called Germany. Germanic culture extends beyond the political boundaries. Let's not forget that that was a concept that Hitler exploited to ignite the Second World War. Number five, Arthur. No doubt some of you were thinking of B. Arthur or King Arthur when you heard me say Arthur. Now, those names passed through my mind too, but I settled on an image of an explorer named Gabriel Arthur. I think that geographers are by nature exploring folk, so as a semi-retired professor of historical geography, he stood out to me. Sorry. In 1673, Gabriel Arthur was an indentured servant who was about 17 years old. In that year, he accompanied a small group of colonists from Virginia on an exploration of southern Appalachia. Like other explorers, they were keen to find economic opportunities in western waterways that would connect them to the Pacific Ocean. Now, through a bit of intrigue, his group was double-crossed by their native host, the Cherokee, but he was spared because the Cherokee chief took a liking to the boy. A short while later, he was taken on a lengthy hunting trip up north, but they encountered a band of Shawnee out of southern Ohio. The Cherokee were defeated and Gabriel was captured and taken back to Ohio. His captors were impressed by his appearance and his metal tools. Through sign language, he convinced them to let him go so he could secure those same tools for them in exchange for the kinds of beaver pelts that they were singeing over large fires around the campsite. Convinced of his sincerity, they gave him some food and food supplies and ferried him across the Ohio River into what is today Kentucky. They pointed out a trail for him to follow back to his people in Virginia. That trail led him to a pass about 18 miles from my house. Later, the British named that pass the Cumberland Gap. Keep in mind that this was 100 years before Daniel Boone and his company of woodsmen blazed the wilderness road that led into the interior of the continent. Now, some of you are no doubt thinking, what about the surname Arthur? What's its story, Van? Come on, get with it. This is a surname show, not history. Okay. Hold on. Now, it's not too far from the legend of King Arthur. Forgive me, Welsh speakers, but I'm going to attempt to pronounce Wales' name in Welsh. Cymru. At any rate, it most likely originated in Wales, and it likely meant a bear man. Now, Harrison claims that it might have been adapted from a similar Latin word. In addition to England, Arthur has been in Scotland since the 15th century. Being just across the Irish Sea from Wales, the name appears in the pre-Norman records of Limerick, Ireland. I think I will side with Harrison on this name being a Celtic generic surname, but to which country did your line originate? Only a paper trail and DNA can tell you for sure. Number six, Crispin. This Germanic Slovian surname is rare in Great Britain. It meant a man of Christ. The German form is and the Slovian form is Crispin and Crispin are Americanized forms of those names. Number seven, Radabaugh. As fate would have it, there's a second German surname in the crowd. Like Crispin, it's something of an Americanized version of or one online source said it meant clear stream, but I'm not 100% confident of that interpretation. Number eight, York. If you're at least middle-aged and from the South with an inkling of patriotism in your heart, you will have likely heard about the battlefield exploits of a tall, slim fellow from Fentress County, Tennessee. His name was Alan Cullum York. He won the Medal of Honor for his service in the Ardennes Forest in France during World War I. Gary Cooper won an Academy Award for playing him in the 1941 movie Sergeant York. Interestingly, he was arguably prouder of his work in bringing quality education to Fentress County, Tennessee than he was to the battlefield exploits. He founded the York Agricultural Institute in 1926. It's now operated by the state of Tennessee, and most folks in my area call it York Institute. I'll post a link to my video on Sergeant York, so if you're interested, you can hear more about him. But what about his surname? His last name? Well, with a large historic county in England named York up in the Northeast, one would think that the surname must have a Northern or Northeastern uh, English association. And indeed, it's from that region of Great Britain, so it's a toponymic name. 
Harrison says that its roots are Anglo-Norse Latin Celt. In other words, it's an old name that had expressions among the Celts, Norse, Saxons, Angles, and presumably the French who spoke a Latin-based language. Well, friends, that's all I have for you today. I hope you got something meaningful and helpful out of our discussion. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. I invite you to check out all the videos on the Vantage Point. In addition to the surnames of Appalachia and the South series, they cover a wide range of topics, including a three-part series on Appalachian superstitions, Appalachian omens, and Appalachian ghost stories. If the man warrants it, I'll be back soon with another episode on the surnames of Appalachia and the American South. I hope to see you then. God bless you and yours. Bye-bye.